Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new church year. Uh, this is Advent, so also we are back to year A in our lectionary cycle. So when we think about the gospel, the gospel we'll be focusing on for this year is Matthew. So if you do any reading and stuff on your own, that may be what you want to look at. Uh, lots of things to tell you about Advent. The first is the purple insert today that you got. We're going to be using it. It can be used in two ways. We're going to use it every week. It's a four-pager. So you can, after worship, after we use it, to be good stewards of our resources, you can just put it right back on the pile when you leave, and we could use it for next week. However, if you are someone who has an Advent wreath at home or would like to use it for your own devotional uses, you can take it home with you and just use it. We'll print a few more extra, but those are two ways that might be helpful. Uh, other Advent devotional pieces that might be helpful to you on your way out on that same table, there were some Advent calendars and some Advent devotionals, so please feel free to take those for your personal use. Uh, if you are so inclined and want to know everything calendar-related for Advent and Christmas, if you go on our website, right on the front page, there's a link that says everything you need to know about Advent and Christmas. So click on that, and you will have all your dates for midweek and Christmas Eve services and such there. Uh, it is also very important to many of you, uh, the new flower chart is up for 2023. So it's in the usual spot there by the Living Library. If you would like to sign up for flowers, please go ahead and do so. All right, calendar for this week. Oh, today is your last day for Poinsettias and Lutheran World Relief gifts. Those order forms are under the mailboxes at the top of the ramp. If you would like to do that, again, today's the last day. Put the money and the order form in Deb's box. All right, so for the week. Monday, um, different than normal stewardship meeting, 6.30 p.m. in the conference room. Tuesday, if you just love decorating and can't get enough of it, uh, the Ultra Guild would love your help. Tuesday at 9 a.m., they're starting decorating here. So please, if you would like to avail yourself of doing more decorating, you are more than welcome to come. 6.30 p.m. is mutual ministry in the chapel. Wednesday starts our Advent midweek, extra uh, worship experiences and opportunities. 6 p.m. is the potluck meal. And then, I'm oh, sorry, not potluck. It is being provided. 6 p.m. is the meal. Just come. 7 p.m. is Advent worship and children's activities. Our focus for worship this year, uh, we are looking at Advent carols. So we will be focusing on four Advent carols, a different one each week, and their kind of scriptural influences as well. Um, if you were, we've been doing evening prayer, we're gonna be doing a different form of evening prayer. So if the last one wasn't your cup of tea with the chanting, um, there will still be music, it's just a little bit more spoken. So that will be on Wednesday evenings. Thursday, Table Talk uh, is at the Main Cup with Pastor Matt at 6 p.m. The topic is the various Lutheran church bodies in America. You know, okay. I was like, well, we could branch out further. But Pastor Matt is sharing all the different Lutheran church bodies. There's more than we realized, apparently. Uh, 6 p.m. at the Main Cup. Next Saturday is really busy. It's the Christmas in the Valley celebration. So 7 o'clock is when the concert is here, which you are more than welcome to come to. Uh, we are also in need of folks to help point people in the right direction. So if you would be able to uh, help and volunteer in that way, please contact Wendy. One other uh, volunteer uh, opportunity, Tony Magtoro, who was the youth director here for a short time, We'll be having his memorial service here. This space was one of the biggest spaces that was available uh, to host that, being that he was so involved in our whole synod. We're expecting a lot of people. So Saturday, December 10th, is his memorial service. If you are able to help in any way, again, sort of same deal, ushering and helping direct people, please again contact Wendy. There are other announcements, again, please look those over about cookie exchanges and adopting a family and Christmas caroling. Um, Pastor Matt, is that it? Oh, he left me. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's it. I usually just use him as my checkpoint, and now 
Anything else? Okay. All right, then we will prepare ourselves for worship with the prelude. Invite you, Sam, for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake up from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on the way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. People, God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. 
By water and spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn this day is hymn 259. 259. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. My brothers and sisters, today we begin the season of Advent. We open our hearts to God's love as we prepare to welcome Christ into our lives and homes. The candles of this wreath remind us that Jesus Christ came to conquer the darkness of sin and lead us into the light of his glorious kingdom. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let us pray. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness, of inner, the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessing upon us as we light the candles on this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Spirit and the church cry out. Amen. All those who await his appearance pray. The whole creation pleads. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Praise you, O God, our salvation who is near. You hold us in our waiting and keep us awake to the world. You show up in our lives at unexpected times. Bless us as we light the candles, on, as we light this candle to keep vigil for your arrival. We trust that even though we do not know the day or the hour, you hurry to gather all people to your peace. Amen. We'll now sing verse 1 of Light One Candle. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Show up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You all may be seated for the lessons. The lesson for today comes from Isaiah, the second chapter, the first verse. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. We will read responsibly Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates of Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Here ends the lesson. gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So before we get actually into the sermon, just a little uh, reminder and slash uh, check of your memory. So we have started the season of Advent, which is commonly a season that is focused on as our preparation for Christmas. But Advent is so much more than that. Our focus really in Advent is less so preparation for Christmas and more about the coming of Jesus. Not baby Jesus, but Jesus who has risen and ascended and is with the Father. The focus is really more the second coming. It's a season of preparation. We have two seasons of preparations. The first is Lent. The second is Advent. Now, dear friends, the season of Lent is what color? Purple. The season of Advent used to be purple. It did because it was the season of preparation, reminding us, we hear John the Baptist in the next two weeks calling us, remember, repent, radically reorient your lives that they may show forth Christ. And then in, Ad, and in Lent, it's remember what keeps you from living that life and that closeness with God. However, in the not too distant past, we change to blue as a sign and reminder of hope, that we are waiting in hope for our Savior to come and make things right. We're waiting for the second coming. So just wanted to remind you about that as you continue to prepare in this season, not just for Christmas, but for the second coming. 
you'll obviously hear that and have heard that in our readings and the music that has been chosen for today. We hear these themes of Advent Second Coming. So now to the sermon. The sermon title, Tanks into Combines, is not mine. It's Pastor Matt's. I read the title that he came up with when we were planning our Advent, and I said, we are not using that for a title. And then something happened, and I'm like, that's going to be the title. So uh, Isaiah, my son Isaiah, uh, our son Isaiah, goes to daycare in Brunswick, and we live in Boonesboro. So every Monday and Tuesday, we have a nice drive in the morning and in the afternoon, whether it's me or Pastor Matt. But a few weeks ago, we had a fun experience. Uh, you can imagine between Boonesboro and Brunswick, there are a lot of fields and a lot of farms. Isaiah loves anything farm. It first started with cows, and then it changed to tractors as we started seeing more tractors driving. So usually we'd get in the car and that would be the demand. I want to see cows, I want to see tractors. And I'm like, well, we'll do our best. I will keep my eyes peeled. But then a few weeks ago, we were coming from uh, Miss Caitlin's house and we saw a combine. Now, a combine is different than anything Isaiah had ever seen. It is much bigger. <laughs> it was doing a lot more stuff. It could do a lot more. And he made me explain what it was. And he just, uh, as we came by the corner and then turned, he just kept watching. And Mama, look at the combine. Combine tractor, combine tractor. And I'm like, yes. So needless to say, the I want to look for cows and tractors, the, the new thing is I want to look for combine tractors. And now it's getting a bit harder at the end of the harvest season to see any combine tractors. He doesn't know this yet, and I didn't say it when his listening ears, but I asked Grammy and Pop Pop to search out a combine tractor for Christmas because I think that might be a good thing. He was just elated. Uh, my friends, the, over the next few weeks, uh, we will not be actually preaching on the Gospels, we are going to be preaching the prophets, um, preaching these prophecies that lead to what is coming. So this morning, of course, we're focusing on Isaiah. And the beautiful and complicated thing about the book of Isaiah is there's actually three authors of Isaiah. And they're, it's kind of written in three different times. And there are historically different things going on when each of those writers writes. So let's just focus on 1st Isaiah this morning. <clears throat> what we hear in 1st Isaiah and what is going on in the background. In the world that 1st Isaiah is writing, countries are trying to take over other countries. There are powers trying to take over other powers for land, for political reasons, and they'll do it at any cost. They work together, they band together to make it happen. Sounds familiar in our lives. At this point in Israel's history, we are divided two kingdoms. This is the, still the original 12 tribes, but this all changed when Israel decided it wanted to be like everybody else, and it wanted to have a king. And from then on, things got really messy. So we have the northern kingdom now of Israel with the capital of Samaria, and we have the southern kingdom of Judah with the capital of Jerusalem. What is happening is Syria is working with Israel, the northern kingdom. They're going to work together to try and overthrow Judah in an attempt for the three of them to work together to take over Assyria. All this plotting and stuff sounds so familiar. The first chapter of Isaiah is Isaiah talking about how the problem with all of this is that God's people, both northern and southern kingdom, God's people have forgotten who they are. 
and they're playing into this game of politics, and they're forgetting who they are supposed to be as God's chosen people. They are not acting like God is in control. They are not acting as the covenant people meant to live in this land of plenty. They are forgetting. And this saddens God greatly. But that's not what we hear this morning. Now imagine these people, just a second, before we go back into the, what we hear this morning. There is power plays, there is fighting, there is who do we follow, there is who do we work with. We know that when people are warring and against each other and making alliances, not only is that anxiety and fear real, but it affects economy and everything that goes with that as well. So we can imagine these people sitting there also thinking about supply chains and having enough food to eat and who do we trust and how are we going to live. Does this hit home? Into that, Amos says the words we hear this morning. That all of this anxiety, all of this fear, all of this playing with the powers that be is not what God wants, and it is not the final word for Judah. The final word for Judah will be God's. People will come and stop fighting. People will come and learn what does it mean to be God's people again. They will come to Jerusalem. They will learn and hear and follow in God's paths. They will stop fighting with each other. Stop trying to get on top and be powerful and everything that they've used to hurt one another, all the spears, all the weapons, are going to be changed into those things that help care for the land, that help produce food and peace, a peaceful life. That's a word of comfort, a word of hope. I didn't think about this until I was doing Lectio on Monday. Many of you know war differently than I and younger generations with me know war. You have sat through or heard stories more close to home than me of what it was like to give up things during war, what it was to ration, what it was to be fearful of whether there would be raids and bombs and things like that. War looks differently now, but we still have it. It may seem far off, but it is still as deadly and harmful to humanity. I think we sit here equally just as the folks of Judah and Israel then with our anxieties and our fears about what is happening in our world. I also think about our men and women who serve in the military and the things that they have brought back from war that they still continue to deal with and the scary things that they relive. And this reading speaks to me during this Advent season still of hope of hope that we are called to trust in as we wait for our Savior to truly bring peace, to truly make it that we aren't fighting one another still because we even fight amongst ourselves in our own country and are hurtful of one another. My prayer, as I think about Isaiah Day, is that we, would be so excited and think about and continue to pray for the day when we can get excited about everything turning into combines, that we look for peace and hope for peace, and that we ask God as we wait and say, come Lord Jesus, that God would use us to be part of making that peace happen. May it be so. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together hymn number 439, Soon and Very Soon, hymn 439. To the word of God, let us confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in your worship bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faiths in your redemptive and healing work. Lord, in your mercy, God of wonder, the earth's beauty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitats, preserve the wild places, and protect endangered plants and animals. Lord, in your mercy, God of peace. You judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to war. We pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth. 
Lord, in your mercy. God of loving kindness, you desire fullness of life for everyone. Fill those who hunger, comfort the grieving, and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care, especially Doris Taylor, Donna Musser, Dolores Parra, Mary Jablonski, Ganella Keller, UVA friends and family, Terry Poffenberger, Adrian Roderick, Eric Hanna, Skippy Zimmerman. Lord, in your mercy. God of community, you are present when we gather in your name. Guide congregations in transition or conflict. Give wisdom to congregational councils, call committees, and ministry leaders. Keep us alert to unexpected opportunities for mission. Lord, in your mercy. God of promise, your goodness is everlasting. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you. We trust that you will bring us into the company of all the saints with rejoicing. Lord, in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a sign of God's peace with your brothers and sisters in Christ, and then you may be seated for the offering and anthem. Peace with you.
eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread, wine, and money, and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to pray. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You confident your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Bless you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. On a night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant to my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. People of God, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people and fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that our Lord is good. 
Let us sing together the Agnus Dei.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn this day is hymn 244, 244. Worship has ended. Now the service begins. As we go out into the world, let us remember our mission.